1. Why do we yawn? You might think yawning is just a sign of boredom or sleepiness, but the actual reason is still debated. One of the most accepted theories is that yawning helps regulate brain temperature. Our brains work best within a narrow range of temperatures, and when they start to overheat due to stress, fatigue, or even boredom, a deep inhalation of cooler air can help cool things down. Yawning also increases blood flow and may stretch the lungs and their surrounding tissues, increasing alertness. There's also a social aspect to yawning. It's contagious. Seeing or even thinking about someone yawning can trigger one in you. It's thought to be a sign of empathy or a primitive group behavior that kept early humans synchronized. So next time you catch yourself yawning, it might not mean you're bored. It could just be your brain adjusting its thermostat or trying to stay alert. 2. Why is the sky blue? It's one of the first science questions we ask as kids, and surprisingly, it's all about how light behaves. Sunlight looks white to our eyes, but it's actually made up of all the colors in the rainbow. When sunlight enters Earth's atmosphere, it collides with molecules and tiny particles. This scattering affects shorter wavelengths, like blue more than longer wavelengths like red or orange. So blue light gets scattered in all directions, filling the sky with that familiar color. During sunrise and sunset, the sunlight travels through more of the atmosphere, scattering most of the blue and letting reds and oranges shine through. This is also why the sky can appear gray on hazy or polluted days. More particles in the air scatter all wavelengths more evenly, dulling the blue effect. So the blue sky is a simple trick of light scattering and the right amount of air molecules doing their thing. 3. Why does your voice sound different on recordings? Ever cringed at hearing your own voice in a video? You're not alone. That, wait, I don't sound like that moment is totally normal. When you speak, you hear your voice in two ways, one through sound waves traveling through the air and into your ears, and the other through vibrations in your skull. The sound you hear in your head is richer and deeper because the bone conduction enhances the lower frequencies. But when your voice is recorded and played back, all you're hearing is the sound from the air, not the extra depth from your skull vibrations. That's why it often sounds higher pitched or thinner than what you're used to. Basically, the version of your voice you think is real is a mix of air and bone, but everyone else hears only the air version. That's the one on tape, and yes, that's how you really sound to the world. Four. Why do we get brain freeze? You're happily enjoying an ice cream cone and then, bam, sudden stabbing pain in your forehead. That's brain freeze. But what actually causes it? The technical term is sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia, a fancy way of saying your brain's nerve bundle freaks out. When something cold hits the roof of your mouth, it causes blood vessels in that area to constrict rapidly. Then, as your body warms it back up, those vessels quickly dilate. This sudden change in blood flow sends signals to your brain that something's off. The brain interprets these signals as pain, and since the sensation comes from the mouth, it misfires the pain to your forehead. It's a kind of referred pain where the brain gets a bit confused about where the problem actually is. To avoid it, eat cold food slowly and try warming your mouth with your tongue or a sip of warm water when it strikes. 5. Why do onions make you cry? Chopping onions is basically a rite of passage for any home cook, and it almost always ends in tears. Why? It's all chemistry. When you slice into an onion, you break its cells, releasing enzymes that react with sulfur-containing compounds. These create a volatile gas called synpropanethyl S-oxide. When this gas reaches your eyes, it reacts with the moisture in them to form mild sulfuric acid. That's what causes the stinging, burning sensation. Your eyes then produce tears to flush the irritant out. Fun fact, different types of onions have different levels of these compounds, so red onions might not hit as hard as white ones. Want to stop the tears? Chill your onions before cutting. They release less gas when cold, or cut under a vent or near running water to help whisk the gas away. So no, it's not personal. The onion isn't mad at you. It's just basic chemistry doing its thing. 6. Why ice floats on water? It seems backward, right? Most substances become denser as they cool and sink, but not water. When water freezes, its molecules arrange into a crystalline structure that actually takes up more space than liquid water. This expansion makes ice less dense, which is why it floats. This seemingly small quirk of physics has huge consequences for life on Earth. If ice sank, lakes and oceans would freeze from the bottom up, making life underwater nearly impossible in cold regions. Instead, floating ice forms an insulating layer that protects the liquid water below, allowing fish and other organisms to survive. 
This property is unique to water and a few other substances, and it's due to the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. These bonds stretch out as water freezes, locking the molecules into that lighter lattice structure. It's a perfect example of nature's odd design choices that make life possible in unexpected ways. 7. How Microwave Ovens Actually Work You pop in some leftovers, press a button, and a minute later, hot food. But what's actually happening inside a microwave? Microwaves use electromagnetic waves at a specific frequency, about 2.45 gigahertz, to heat food. These waves specifically excite water molecules in the food. As the molecules absorb the energy, they start vibrating rapidly. This movement generates heat through friction, warming up your meal from the inside out. That's why things with more water like soup or veggies heat up faster than dry foods. The microwave's metal walls reflect the waves, bouncing them around until they hit food while a rotating turntable helps ensure even heating. That's also why metal is a no-go inside. Metal can reflect the microwaves unpredictably, causing sparks. And no, microwaves don't nuke your food. They don't make it radioactive. They're just using physics to wiggle water molecules fast enough to get things hot. 8. Why time feels faster as we age. Remember how endless summers felt when you were a kid? Now years seem to fly by? So what changed? The way we perceive time is influenced by how much new information we process. When you're young, everything is new. Your brain is constantly forming new connections and memories. This creates a denser mental timeline, making those years feel fuller and longer. As we age, we encounter fewer novel experiences and fall into routines, which means fewer distinct memories. Days blur together, also each year becomes a smaller percentage of your total life lived, so one year at age 10 is 10% of your life, but only 2% at age 50. That shrinking proportion makes it feel like time is speeding up. Want to slow it down? Seek out novelty, travel somewhere new, learn a skill or break your routine. Your brain will take more notice and time will feel fuller again. 9. How glass is technically a liquid or not? You may have heard that glass is a super-cooled liquid, but that's only partially true. Glass is actually an amorphous solid, meaning its atoms are arranged more like a liquid than a crystalline solid, but it doesn't flow over time the way a liquid would. The myth probably came from looking at old cathedral windows that appear thicker at the bottom, but that's likely due to how they were made, not because the glass flowed downward. In reality, glass is rigid and behaves like a solid at room temperature. It doesn't have a traditional melting point, it softens gradually as it heats. So while it's not a crystalline solid, it's definitely not oozing like syrup. Scientists sometimes call it a frozen liquid, but that's more poetic than literal. Either way, glass is weirder than we think. Neither fully liquid nor traditionally solid. Just something in between. 10. Why your phone battery degrades over time You've probably noticed that your phone doesn't hold a charge like it used to. That's not your imagination, it's basic battery chemistry. Most smartphones use lithium-ion batteries, which store energy through chemical reactions. Over time, these reactions become less efficient. Each full charge cycle slightly wears down the battery's ability to hold charge, due to buildup of chemical residue and micro-damage to the battery's internal structure. Heat, fast charging, and keeping your phone fully charged or fully drained can all accelerate this degradation. That's why newer phones have features like optimized charging. They learn your habits to avoid keeping the battery at 100% unnecessarily. Eventually, no matter how careful you are, the battery will wear out. It's just part of how the tech works. Replacing the battery or upgrading the device is usually the only long-term fix. Until then, slow charging and staying between 20 to 80% battery can help extend its life. And that's it. Every day we live surrounded by little mysteries that science quietly explains, sometimes in surprising ways. But here's the question. Which of these facts made you see the world a little differently today? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this brain-tingling breakdown of everyday wonders, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We've got more everyday magic coming your way soon.